Hi, welcome to QSIS Control Quick Starts. I'm still Jeff Perkins. This is Advanced Tables, Multidimensionals, and the Switch Case. And if you're looking at it, you might be like, is this just another follow-up episode? And the answer is sort of. Um, the, the reality is, is I had so much fun making the episode about statuses that uh, there were a few, actually there was an Easter egg uh, that I left in that particular script for you. And I wanted to come back and follow up on that. Um, but here's the big idea. And it's okay if you haven't seen the other one, it'll be fine. The big idea here is that this episode is all about advanced uses of tables. And really I'm gonna show two big ideas. One is how do we make multi-dimensional tables or multi-dimensional arrays, if that's what you prefer. They're gonna be tables though, uh, cause I'm gonna use, it doesn't matter. Uh, String keys, string, string keys. I'm using string keys, not numbers, just strings. It's fine. Multi-dimensional tables. Additionally, I'm gonna introduce the idea of the switch case, which to me is, uh, is a fantastic bread and butter kind of thing. Um, the big idea is tables, tables, tables. Okay, uh, I'm having way too much fun and that is the point. So. Here we are, let's look at the script. It's already open and we're gonna do this one quick. So uh, you may remember that in a previous episode right here, uh, I left you this Easter egg to the viewer. Can you combine uh, these into a single multi-dimensional table instead? Uh, you may remember, uh, in fact, come back up here to our uh, definitions of our tables. You may remember that we had created for our status indicator, because remember status indicators, we really want to manipulate two things. We want to manipulate its dot value. We got to do that. Uh, but we want to also manipulate its dot string because that's really useful. Now, when I did it in the other episode, I made two tables. I made a table of all of the values and I made a table of all of the strings. And the challenge was, could you actually make this a multi-dimensional table instead of just two different tables. Is it wrong? No, it's just different. Um, and it's okay. And especially as you turn the corner and you start looking at things in JSON and stuff, you're gonna deal with multi-dimensional tables. So, hey, let's just make our own and play with it. So here's what we did. We made a table, table of device statuses. And then we actually started putting uh, keys in key value pairs in that table. Here it is. Uh, the first key value pair is the key of S status is okay. And its pair is dun, 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 a table. And then we go inside of that table and we create the string key called value and associate it with table QSA status dot okay, just like we did previously. And then we create another key value pair inside of that inner table with the string key called string. Uh, and it corresponds to the value of the string oakley dokely. Okay, uh, we do the same thing else uh, down here, line 60, 64, 68, 72, 76. We create uh, string keys with uh, the associated uh, table as its value. And then we put string, uh, then we put key value pairs inside of that inner table. We made multi-dimensional tables. I kind of dig it. Um, so how do we use it in our script? Come down here and let's look at how we've updated funk set status. Here's funk set status. This is what it used to be, right? That's what it was when we left off in the last uh, the last version of this, but here's what it looks like now. We're still gonna do the fail safe evaluation. We are going to look inside the table of device status for that string that we're passing in. And as long as it's found, i.e. as long as when we index the table, it doesn't come back as nil, then that means that it's actually in the table and we can access it and use it. So here we are, uh, controls.projectorstatus.value is going to look in table device status 
at that particular key that we're passing in. And then we index that inner table with the value to get the value. And same thing in line 173. We're going to index the outer table, right? This is indexing the outer table and this is indexing the inner table. And we're taking the string value uh, that comes out of the key value pair and we're shoving it into the dot string of our projector status indicator. And there we are. Um, if this turns out to be nil, i.e. if this turns out to, uh, if that outer key isn't in the outer table, then we say, I don't know, man, something weird happened. Uh, here's what wasn't there. <laughs> we didn't find these things. Um, actually, uh, I don't think that's gonna work, is it? It's not gonna work because if we didn't find it, it can't print it. Um, so we can just pass in, it didn't find arc status. So there we are. Hey, sometimes uh, you find things in real time. There you are. Uh, so we'll pass back the key that wasn't found. So with that, there we go. And we can watch this guy operate. And here we are. Oh, I probably broke it now that I played with it. Line 177. Yeah, there it is. Typo. Hit, hit go. All right, now it's happy. And we'll split the screen so we can see this thing working. There it is. It's working pretty as a picture. Let's get that red off. There it is. And well, I didn't update the speed at which this thing reports. That's okay. It's not important to our uh, presentation today. Um, what is important to our presentation today though, is uh, I have another idea I want to show you. Let's, uh, yeah, I don't need that. Um, let's do this. So look right here. One of the things that uh, that I was looking at uh, since I was having so much fun playing with tables is I was looking at this big decision tree between 123 and 147. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very common. It's a perfectly fine way of doing things. There's just some things to think about in this. How does this thing execute? Well, the first thing it does is it evaluates line 123. If if uh, 123 evaluates to true, then it executes all of this stuff fine. Um, but what if 123 evaluates the faults? Well, then it comes to the else if and evaluates it. Well, what if that evaluates the faults? Well, then it comes down here to evaluate that. And what if that evaluates the faults? Well, then it comes down here and it evaluates this, right? We have to go through the tree. We have to go from the top all the way down to we get to the bottom. Uh, in some cases, before we find something to actually do. Well, it takes time to do those evaluations. Again, in our script, particularly in our script, it's so little that it really doesn't matter, but it, we're talking about a big idea. And so a big idea here is, what is a more efficient way of, of doing this? It actually turns out a more efficient way of doing this is, Remember the last episode I showed you lookup tables? Well, this is sort of a special idea of a lookup table of let's look up the functions to run, i.e. Let's, let's make each of these little things their own little anonymous function. And so here's what I mean. Uh, in other languages, this idea is called a switch case. Uh, and now they, right. So like, if you're familiar with C or something, they have a very specific way of formulating their switch case. But the big idea is that instead of evaluating, striking out, evaluating, striking out, evaluating, Ooh, I should do this one. Instead, it takes a value and then it goes directly to the thing it's supposed to do and it executes it. Now, um, we don't have a proper built-in switch case in Lua. But what we do have is, well, we have tables. And because there is no data structure in Lua but the table, says Roberto Yuroslimsky, uh, we can leverage a table like this. So um, let's look at this particular table at line 91. 
I've made a special table and I'm calling it a switch case uh, here, table switch case to set button state. I know it's super long and wordy, but the big idea is what are we doing? We are going to be creating a table of functions, a table that has a key and then has an anonymous function of the things you want it to do. It's a completely analogous to this whole structure here. Basically, we're passing, we're going to pass in, we're going to create a key in our table that is s power is off. So basically, whenever we pass this in as a key, we're going to run this set of code. Exactly like what happened here. If we pass in uh, for arg state and we pass in that arg state is s power is off, then we run all of this code. We're doing exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same idea. The difference, the difference is that I don't have to do evaluations. I don't have to, I don't have to take my string and go, are you s power is off? Nope. Okay. Are you s power is warming? Okay, no. Are you s power is on? Yep. Okay, then do this stuff. We're just making it so that all we actually have to do is index the table and run the corresponding code. It's it's a lookup table. It's a lookup table of anonymous functions. Now, in this case, it's an anonymous function. We haven't given it a name and we're not passing it any arguments. We're just asking it to execute code. Again, the thing I want you to see is that these are 100% logically analogous. The only difference is, is I don't have to do if, else, if, else, if, else, if. Instead, the code looks exactly like this. I look in my table at my key, as long as we find the key in the table, then we index the table. And this is the part that's a little bit, a little bit subtle, double parentheses. The double parentheses is run that function. And since we, our function doesn't have a name. Uh, more importantly, since our function doesn't take any arguments, it's just open and closed. We're just running the corresponding function. Which function is it? It's the one that is in that. It's the one that's the value in the table at this key. Key value pairs. We stick this key in to this table. It gives us a function, and this says run that function. And so when we do, uh, our, fun our, our big function here says that func set button state ran and it used this as the argument. Otherwise, uh, remember, because sometimes it's possible that, uh, that we don't have that key in the table. We'll, and we need to be ready for that eventuality. And so we fail in a safe way. Uh, and we say that, uh, hey, we didn't find it. And that's the thing that we didn't find. And so there you are. Uh, it, uh, it does its thing and, uh, well, where's my page page one. All right. And let's split the screen so we can see the code work. Well, you know what? I did it backwards, but that'll be okay. Hit go. Are right, we already, already are going. And when we run, there it is. It's running. And it's doing its thing just like we saw uh, in previous episodes. It's um, it's warming. It's on. It's doing its thing, man. So uh, with that, two two big ideas. Two tables, tables, tables. You can make a multi-dimensional. In fact, uh, it doesn't have to be two. You can nest. You can keep nesting tables as deep as you really kind of want to go. Two's probably. Three's probably the max. Two's probably as far as you'll usually go. But hey, man, um, the world is your oyster and you're the one making this particular world. Um, secondly, the switch case. It's really clever uh, because it eliminates evaluations. You just look up. Oh, yeah. One more Easter egg, friends. Before we go, one last Easter egg. Bring this down. 
doopy 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 doop boop. It doesn't want to cooperate. That's okay. We'll leave it right here. Remember our event handler? There's nothing wrong with our event handler. But I want to give you a challenge. New Easter egg. Can you rewrite this event handler to also use the switch case approach? And for a bonus, make the switch case pass variables. I look forward to seeing uh, all your comments and replies uh, out in the world. Uh, you guys know how to get a hold of me. And uh, we will talk to you later. I hope you have a great day and uh, enjoy the challenge. It should be a blast. Thanks. Take care.